What's going on everyone? If you are new here, I'm the Print House and today we're installing a BL Touch, a 3D Touch, a CR Touch, whatever auto leveler you have, we're installing it to so all SPO2. Guys, I am not gonna waste your time, let's get right into it. So one note, so it is the first week of spring. If I sound weird, if I say anything weird, please forgive me. I'm suffering from some severe spring allergies. If you hear me sniffling, I, you know, I didn't cut that out, then it's just, it's just, it just keeps happening. I can't stop it. I'm dying over here. Anyway, for real, let's start. So here is the quick overview. So first we're gonna flip the sew ball on its back. We're on its side. We're gonna remove about eight screws. Once we remove those screws, we have access to the Coriality V2.2.1 board. On that board, you have a three plus two connector. That three plus two connector gives you your ground, your plus five volts, your signal, your signal ground, and your Z minus. Those are the pins that are on every single VL touch, CR touch, all those things. And from there, I'm gonna show you guys which pins on the board go to uh, which uh, of those corresponding wires. Now I can give you the wires on my CL or my CR touch, but it's not going to necessarily be the same for you. But I'll give you the pinout for the board, and then we're going to wire it up. We're going to run the cable, and then we're going to attach the CR touch, the BL touch, whatever it is, to the extruder. And then from there, I'm going to show you how to load the firmware. You need a mini USB cable, not a micro, a mini, a mini USB cable is the one that was used like. 15 years ago it's incredibly old and i have no idea why you need that one but that's the one you need and then you're gonna load the firmware through cura and then you're ready to go so on the back or on the bottom you've got a few screws on each side it looks like it's actually 10 screws that you have to remove i have already done so and i actually lost my screws so i put some m3 screws in here in order just to secure it so you guys can see but you have 10 screws, and if I recall correctly, these screws are incredibly tight. On my unit, these were very, very tight, and I actually almost stripped some of the screws removing it. So guys, you need to be incredibly careful because if you strip the screws, you're not gonna be able to put the cover back, and maybe you don't wanna put the cover back, maybe you just want it to be open air to cool down faster, but nonetheless, be very careful, it's just a Phillips head screw, if I recall correctly. So once we get the cover off, we have access to all the guts, you have your power supply, your main board. On my board, it is the Creality V2.2.1 board. That could vary depending on which generation SVO2 you have. I don't know, my guess is you have the same uh, board. But, so on the very bottom, and of course you're probably not gonna be able to see, but on the bottom of the board right here, you can check what model board you have. Just go ahead and check to make sure it's the same, it probably is. So you might be able to do a little bit of relative positioning in order to determine where I'm pointing. You've got the power supply here, the top of the main board up here, the bottom right here, you get the point. And I will have zoomed in pictures on the screen, but Nonetheless, you have your, on the very bottom, you have your board number, your version number right here. It says Creality V2.2.1. Up here in the top left, you're going to have your three pin connector and your three pin connector is going to have your ground, your plus five volts and your signal. And that is going horizontally. And then going vertically, you're going to have your two pin connector right here and that is going to have your signal ground and your Z minus. So because the board pinout has three plus two configuration, you're obviously going to need cables that match that same three plus two configuration. In my case, my cables are three cables that have no snap fit connector and then two cables that have a snap fit connector. Now you can purchase cables that have three with no snap fit connector and two with no snap fit connector as well as having the BL touch on the other side. But this is highly not recommended. I do not recommend this at all because wherever you connect this two pin connector, it needs to snap into place. If you don't have the snap, it's going to be incredibly loose. And over time, there is a high probability 
your BL Touch will fail. So I would recommend spending extra money to get a cable that has the snap fit on the two side. Now the connectors we are working with are up here in the top left corner. You're gonna have this plus two connector and then you're gonna have a series of pins that do not actually have a connector housing. So there's gonna be four rows of three pins. There's the top row, the second row, the third row, and the fourth row. You want the second row. You do not want the top, uh, you want the second row. And you can kind of do some more relational positioning. You have your stepper motor drivers over here. Uh, this is the top left of the board. And if I zoom out, you can kind of get a better picture for where this is on the board. From here, you're gonna take your plus two connector. It only goes in one direction. So go ahead and put that in. On the top, you want to have your signal ground. On the bottom, you want to have your Z minus. And then go ahead and take your other three pins and go ahead and plug them into this second row. And on the far left, you want to have your ground in the middle, you want to have your plus five volts, and on the far right, you want to have your signal. Now guys, please hear me out. Please do not use the color of the wire as the sole discretion on where to plug it. A bunch of different manufacturers will make the same exact wire bundle, but they're going to use different colored wires. So just going off of the color of the wire will not help you. In this particular case, watching this video, you can, you can match where the color of the wire is here to where the color of the wire is on the bottom of the machine, but please just do not match my wire to your wire. That's only gonna cause confusion. Now, in this particular case, on the 3D touch, that's what my board says. On the far left, you're going to have ground. Right next to that, you're going to have plus five volts. In the middle, you're gonna have signal. To the right of that, you're gonna have signal ground. And then on the far right, you're gonna have Z minus. So in terms of the letter characteristic, you're going to have G, 5V, S, G, Z minus. And that is the configuration of this particular um, BL touch. Now then your cable is just going to connect like this as if you uh, have never connected one of these before and maybe I'm plugging mine in wrong because it's not going in. Let's see. There we go. So if you are mapping the color of the wire in my example, I have yellow on the far left, I have blue right next to that, I have red in the middle, I have white right next to that, and I have black on the far right. And then if I flip my machine over, in the top left, I have blue, in the middle, I have yellow, and on the far right, I have red. And then the plus two connector, I have black on the top and then white on the bottom. And one more time, guys, I cannot stress this enough. The color of the wire that I have versus the color of the wire that you have does not matter. Just know that in my example, the yellow wire is ground, the um, blue wire is five volts, the red wire is signal, the white wire is ground, and the black wire is Z minus. So yellow is G, uh, blue is 5V, red is S, then white is G, and black is Z minus. So in the very likely situation that your three plus two connector pins do not match what I just showed you, do not worry. All of these connectors can be rewired. So if you flip your connector around to the side that you see the individual clips, most of the time you can just simply take a sharp object and pry this flap back. And this is a little bit difficult, but if you pry the flap back, then you can pull the wire out. Once the wire is pulled out, 
you can then go ahead and then pull the other wires out and reorder the wires in which the configuration best suits your needs. Now the last thing to do in terms of the physical installation is to actually mount the BL touch. So I have my cable coming out here. There is a hole in the frame. This way you can route your cable through that hole and you can then put your faceplate back on. You can screw all 10 screws back together. Once you have the cable running out the back, you can then route the cable over to the extruder. Once you have your cable routed over to the extruder, you can then go ahead and print this 3D printed BL touch mount for the Soval SVO2. I have that link in the description. From there, go ahead and use M3 screws to fix it to this blue faceplate. And you do not need nuts, just M3 screws screw directly into the plate and then go ahead and mount your BL touch or CR touch onto the bottom of this plate. In my particular case, I needed to use M3 screws on the top and then I had to use M3 nuts on the bottom in order to sandwich it and I had to screw the screws into the nuts. This way, the BL touch would be stable. In order to make your BL touch functional, go ahead and take your mini USB cable, plug it into the front of the machine and take the other side, which should have just a standard USB. Plug this into your computer. All right guys, one thing to note is before you connect your printer to the computer, go ahead and plug your printer into the wall, turn your printer on, make sure it is functioning, and then go ahead and install or plug in this cable and then plug the other side into the computer. We want to provide the printer power through the wall, not through the computer. And if there's no power through the wall, it's going to possibly send some incorrect voltages to your board or to your, to your screen and we don't want anything bad to happen. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is search for Soval SVO2 firmware. That is going to bring you to Soval's webpage. Scroll down and find the link for the BL Touch and the no BL Touch firmware in the top right. Click the download button. This might take just a minute, but once it downloads, it's gonna give you a zip file. You should either have WinRAR or 7-zip to extract this file. Go and extract the file. And then once you do that, navigate through the directory to make sure that you have the bltouch.hex file. Once you confirm that, open up Cura and select your SVO2 printer, then select manage printers and update firmware. Go click upload custom firmware, navigate to that bltouch.hex file, and when you do that, click the open button and install your firmware. All right guys, so that is it. And the firmware is installed, the BL Touch works, and everything's good to go. Guys, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to put them in the comments below. I will reply, I have a whole bunch of helpful subscribers. They might see, they might know, and they might be able to reply as well. Guys, I have so much more content on my channel. Please go check it out. Please give me a like and a subscribe. Every single one of those helps. I know it doesn't seem like it, but I promise every single like, subscribe, comment, it all is amazing and helpful. Guys, I have so much content coming. Please stick around. Anyway, until the next one. Bye, guys. It's so far away. It's not going to work this time. It's not going to work.